Hi friends, I'm so glad that you are here this evening. Um, I'm going to give us just a, a little bit of time to transition from our prayer time into our midweek meditation. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope that you will spend the next minute or so greeting one another if you're watching this on Facebook right at 630. I hope that you'll say hello to one another, say hello to me. I will also be um, chatting on Facebook. I'm right there every Wednesday night at 630 along with you as we watch this video. So I hope that you will greet one another and um, I'd love to hear just one word to describe how you're feeling today. What are you feeling today? And another thing you could do is tell us something uh, good or fun that you've done today. What's something that's been particularly fulfilling for you. So take just a moment to greet one another, answer those questions, and we'll wait and make sure everybody's able to get on, um, logged in on time. So I feel like I need to confess to you all, my friends who so faithfully join me, um, that I just spent the last little while teaching this entire uh, devotion meditation time and got up after it was done and looked at my phone to see that about two minutes in, the uh, it stopped recording. <laughs> and I got a phone call. I didn't have my phone on Do Not Disturb. Um, so anyway, I just want to share that story with you that I am delighted to be here, um, but I was probably a little more delighted about 20 minutes ago <laughs> when I did this for the first time. So you're getting round two. Maybe it'll even be better than the first one. That, that is uh, technology right now, and um, this we're just doing our best. So thanks for joining in with me as I try this for a second time. I'll remind you that we are going to spend a few weeks, um, as Alan mentioned a couple of weeks ago on Sunday, and I mentioned last Wednesday night, we're going to be talking about Gary Gunderson's causes of life. We're using these concepts that he says are causes of how we find abundant life in this life. Last week, we talked about hope. And then if you were paying close attention on Sunday morning, when Chris Cherry preached for us, he talked about the concept of coherence. And so that's where we're gonna find ourselves tonight, talking about coherence. So coherence for our purposes, I'm gonna give you just a working definition of that. Coherence is what gives us sense of, a sense of belonging or a sense of meaning in our lives. It's how we make sense of the world around us. That's what coherence is for us. So I'd love for you to answer a question for me this evening with one another here on Facebook. I'd love for you to answer, when is a time when things just didn't make sense to you? Can you articulate a moment in your life when you think that just didn't make sense, especially in the moment? What is a time when everything seemed hard to understand or predict or make sense of? Share that with us in the comments. We can certainly all think of times when life just didn't make sense or a circumstance or situation just didn't make sense. A few years ago, I was in a particularly stressful time of my own life when I had lots of um, work duties, but also I was caring for a lot of people and it was just a particularly stressful time for me. And my family and I one night decided to go to dinner. That might help alleviate some of that stress just to get out of the house and enjoy an evening together. And as we were driving down Elm Street, Stephen was driving and I was looking out the window and talking. And 
I noticed as we passed a, a certain building, I was trying to articulate something about the building and I couldn't get the word that I was thinking of to come out of my mouth. Now that's not a huge cause for alarm. All of us have those moments when we're like, oh, what was the word? It's not a big deal. But as we kept driving down Elm Street, I kept noticing that my access to communicating what I was thinking felt a little harder with every passing minute. We got downtown, we parked, went into a store before we went into dinner. We walked around the store and one of my favorite songs, like all time favorite songs came on the radio above us. And so I called out to Steven and I tried to tell him the name of the song that was playing. Oh, it's, and I couldn't get the words to come out of my mouth. I, I had them in my brain. I knew what I wanted to say and I couldn't say it. So that was cause for alarm. And then we moved over to across the street for dinner and um, these little small episodes seemed to be happening more and more frequently. By the time that we got to dinner, I really could not communicate well at all. I couldn't, I couldn't get words to come out Intelligi intelligibly, that's funny, um, that, I, that I was thinking. And so right about um, the time that our menus came, I also started to feel some tingling and numbness in my left arm. I think you can see where this story is going. So we were naturally very afraid that I was having a stroke. So Stephen called a good doctor friend who was on call at, at Cone and he told us to come right in. So we go to the ER and I am immediately taken back and assessed for a stroke. By the time that I am in the CT scan, I am now numb and unable to really move much of my left side of my body. And my language is almost unintelligible. So I, at this point, can't make sense of anything. Not only is my language not making sense, but what's happening to me is not making sense. There is no coherence going on in that moment. And in that moment, while I'm lying in the CT scan and I think to myself, I wonder if I'm going to be paralyzed, um, if I'm having a stroke and there's going to be paralysis from this. And like we tend to do, I start having a conversation with God that involves a little bit of bargaining. Um, I don't think I'm alone in, in that um, default. And I pr remember praying, among many things, I said to God, Lord, if I'm not going to be able to move, if I'm going to be paralyzed, please just let me be able to speak. That was my primary fear in that moment, was that I was going to no longer be able to communicate verbally anyway. I was terrified of that. Nothing made sense to me and not being able to communicate my questions and my fears. Um, I tried to say I love you to Stephen and I couldn't even get those words out. I was terrified of not being coherent for the rest of my life. So there was a lot going on there um, that, that was not coherent. Long story short, we found out after a battery of tests that stayed overnight, I did not have a stroke. I think you'd probably know that if it had been the case. What I had was something called a hemiplegic migraine, um, which is just a very strange version of a migraine with symptoms that present entirely like stroke symptoms. Um, what's funny about that, just a little aside, I didn't have a headache until the very next day, kind of right before I was released from the hospital. So it didn't even have a headache that went with it. All of the symptoms were stroke-like, hemiplegic migraine. That, once they told us that, it all made sense. We had coherence, we had an answer, we had a sense of meaning for this terrible thing that had happened the day before. So, Gary Gunderson, who came up with these causes of life, he says that 
A loss of coherence is an unmistakable sign that something is amiss. Doesn't that make so much sense? When, when we lose coherence, it's a sign that something's going on wrong. Um, when I couldn't speak, when I lost coherence between my thoughts and my words, that was a sign something was going on. When we were confused about why my body was presenting these symptoms, there was a lack of coherence and we knew that something was wrong until the doctors were able to discern what was right and to make meaning of what was happening. So this idea of coherence is what makes us able to comprehend life. It is something that sustains us truly and we're able to survive and to thrive if we think that life makes sense. So coherence also ties us to each other as we are seeking out similar coherent ideas and goals as we are trying to make sense together. And our scripture provides us with a sense of coherence personally and as a faith community. So I want to read for you today a passage from Philippians. Um, it is in our moments of desperation that we seek meaning the most, right? And isn't our scripture one of the very best ways to seek that meaning in our times of confusion or when hard things happen? In those moments, we need to be reminded that God is present in the midst of that. Coherence, the making sense of things, is what keeps us moving forward and it gives us life when everything else feels unstable. And so these verses from Philippians give us some encouraging reminders of where we can find coherence in our daily lives. So I will um, be reading from Philippians chapter four. Feel free to turn in your own Bible or to just listen along. And it's just two verses, uh, verses eight and nine of chapter four, but they're kind of long. So listen well uh, to all the things that are listed in these verses. Philippians four, starting with verse eight. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Finding meaning doesn't just happen to us. There is not just a lightning bolt one day where the Lord says, this is the meaning of life. Here it is for you. It's our responsibility to seek out meaning and coherence in our lives. And Philippians gives us some ways to do that. This letter to the church in Philippi, like all of the letters that are attributed to Paul, it's an encouragement to a church of how to be with one another. It's a word about how to find coherence together. It's a reminder of what to concentrate on when the outside world feels unpredictable or it feels like there are different expectations or behaviors than what God desires. And so we are reminded by this letter to the Philippians of what we should cling to together of the coherence that we should find as we are seeking out meaning. So I hope you'll take, look with me again at verse 8. Verse 8, it, once again, it says, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, whatever is excellent or worthy of praise, think about these things. Why do you think that we're called to think on these things? Let me know in the comments. Why do you think that 
these are the things that are listed that we are supposed to be thinking on. What makes them so significant in general? Answer that. What do you think? How do these things make a difference in the way that we live our lives, either as individuals or as a community of believers? What difference does it make if these are the things that we think on? I just love the end of verse eight. It's very clear. <laughs> says, think on these things. Think about these things. This is where we should be putting our mental energy, thinking about these specific things. When we are filling our minds with the things of the Lord, it's a lot harder to be brought down by things that might overwhelm us or give us anxiety. When we choose to fill our minds with these things, we are drawn more toward relationships of love and mutual affection and mutual attention instead of caring only for ourselves. When we choose to think on these things, we can find hope and joy and promise in all that might lie ahead, even in moments of uncertainty. If we can find meaning in all that God has done and all that God is going to do for us all around us, it's much easier to envision a future that God might have in store for us. So, do you remember verse 9? Let's take a look at that again. Verse 9 says, Keep on doing the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me. So, the author of Philippians is saying, Keep doing these things that you've learned about Christ. Continue to be a Christ follower. Continue to be concentrating on things that are true and just and pure and excellent and praiseworthy. Continue to model your lives after Christ. And then what does it tell us that we'll receive at the end of verse 9? Tell me that in the comments. Just making sure you're paying attention. If we're doing that, what will we receive? It says at the end of verse 9, the God of peace will be with you. Peace. When we seek coherence, understanding of Christ's goodness, justice, purity, and excellence, we are filled with God's peace. What an incredible promise that is, right? As Christians, we believe that finding meaning in this life can only truly be found in Christ. And so we must intentionally set our minds on such things. And when we do, God offers us peace in our hearts. So, how do we do that practically? How do we think on these things? What does that look like? Most of our days can't be filled with just making running lists of things that are pure and good and true, but there are some practical ways we can do that. All humans, since the beginning of time, have searched for ways to make sense of life, and they've done that in a variety of ways. They've done it through music, they've done it through art, they've done it through relationship, through conversation, through books, through seeking information, and of course as Christians we seek to make sense through our scriptures as well. And so I'm curious today, how do you most often look for life to make sense? What are some of the ways that you try to make sense of things that are practical? Maybe it's journaling for you or music or talking to a friend. What are the ways that you know already that you try to make sense of this life? Go ahead and answer that in the comment section. <clears throat> for 
For many of us, hymns create a sense of coherence for us, don't they? These hymns that we sing individually, but also that we sing corporately make sense for us as individuals, but also as a collective body of Christ. Hymns can be a way to understand our faith better and a way to connect us with one another. So your homework for this week is to choose a hymn that helps you to understand God and your faith better. And there may be one that you've always felt that way about, and that's great. I'd love for you, though, to find a new hymn this week um, that, that maybe you look at in a different way. What is, what are, is a hymn, some lyrics that really help you to make sense, to have coherence in your life and in your faith? And my encouragement to you is to sing that hymn, to sing it every day this week. Sing that hymn and think of the ways that God does want to provide sense for us and offer us coherence if we are seeking it with our hearts. If we are thinking on these things that are true and pure and excellent and praiseworthy. So think of a hymn that fits the bill for you. I'd like for you to sing it every day this week. I'd like for you to tell someone else about it. Tell them why that hymn helps you to make sense of this life. Um, and in addition, if you would be so bold, I'd love for you to share it with me. You can feel free to message me here um, on Facebook, or you can send me a text, or you can email me, Courtney Willis at fbcgso.org. Let me know what hymn text helps you to have coherence, to make sense of this life. There are so many things going on around us that can lead us away from that, that sense of, um, of understanding. But I think that the Lord desires for us to seek to make sense of things through the lens of Christ. And so I hope that you'll consider ways to do that this week. Please pray with me. God, we are grateful for the ways that you help us to make sense of this world. Help us to set our minds on things that come from you alone so that we can make sense of the times when our lives feel disjointed or confusing. Draw us back to our faith that's only in you, that faith that gives us belonging and meaning in this world. Amen. Again, I'm so grateful that you're here. Thanks for being with me on my second take of this video. Um, you might have heard Stephen working in the background. I hope you'll offer grace in that. I know you will. Um, I do want to remind you, as always, of a few upcoming things. We have a couple of standards and then one new thing I want you to know of. Sunday mornings at 9.30, I can be found teaching Sunday school on Facebook or on our church website. And then, as always, I hope that you will rejoin us again at 1030 for worship, Facebook, website, or on YouTube. I hope that you'll invite others to join you as well. And then next week, in addition to our normal Wednesday night, I'm also going to be trying something I hope you will mark your calendars for and give a shot. Um, every Friday in May, beginning next week at 9 a.m., we're going to be offering a chance for you to join by Zoom with my friend, Melody Harrell. Melody is a spiritual director and she's also a former CBF field personnel. And she is gifted in spiritual directing and guidance in contemplative prayers and meditations. And so each Friday morning in May at nine o'clock in the morning, she is going to be hosting a contemplative prayer practice time, about 20 or 30 minutes. It'll be a different thing each week, but I would love for you to find a way to fit that into your Friday morning, just to offer you a sense of peace and reflection and a way to grow in your own faith journey. So we will be sending out announcements, email, Facebook, all of that with the Zoom link. But you can also email me directly if you would like the Zoom link. I hope you'll give it a try. I know this might be new for some of you. 
um, contemplative meditation and centering prayer and those kinds of things. But I think that you'll find that she is a great guide to discerning if that's a great practice for you. So keep that in mind beginning next Friday, 9 a.m. on Zoom. Let me know if you'd like to have that link. So thank you again for being here. This is a delight for me every time that I get to teach. I wish I could see your faces in real life, but I'm grateful that you still choose to come and listen and let the Lord work and stir in your hearts. Um, as we share together. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you next week, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. See you soon.